Today I'm going to show you how to make this quick and easy tofu ricotta with a couple different options, like this one using spinach. Hi, I'm Tammy. Welcome to the Nutmeg Notebook Kitchen. I share recipes that are oil-free, whole food, plant-based. So today I'm going to show you how to make a very simple basil tofu ricotta. So of course we don't eat dairy on a whole food plant-based diet, but we still like some of the similar flavors and textures. And so the tofu does a really good job of stepping in and becoming something that's very similar to ricotta cheese. So I'm going to show you a, the basic recipe, but there's also the option of adding half a cup of nuts to it. And I'm using almonds today. And I am going to add the nuts because I'm making this as a filling for lasagna that I'm gonna to serve to my family. And they like that little extra fat and rich, richness that the almonds give it. So first off, I have a 14 ounce block of firm tofu, and this happens to be organic firm tofu. And I don't usually press it, but this particular one I had to, we usually buy the Wildwood brand at Whole Foods, but they didn't have it. And you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And so we're just having to make do with what we've got, right? Yeah. And so this one just happened to be a lot more watery than the Wildwood. So I did go ahead and put it in my Tofu Express um, tofu press and just pressed out some of the water which I've already poured out. So now I'm just going to break this up. Of course it's not going to want to come out. I'm just going to break it up. I'm using my food processor with the S blade attached and I'm just going to chunk it up just to make it easier. And this is how I want it to be, this firmness. It was really watery. My husband Tom had had some of this tofu that he had cubed up earlier in the day to put in soup and he was like, wow, look at how watery it is. So I was glad he had done that because then I knew in advance that I was going to need to uh, press out a little bit of the water. So we have that in there. Then I have four tablespoons of fresh lemon juice here. Um, we have a lemon tree, and so this is off of our lemon tree. I'm only going to put two tablespoons of it in to begin with, because if it's not enough, I can add more. But if it's too tart, then it's too late. There isn't anything I can do about it. Then I have two cloves of garlic that I've already minced, and I just went ahead and minced it because I wanted to make sure that it really gets incorporated well in the food processor. And it looks like I'm going to have to use my finger here to get the rest of that garlic out. And then I have a one and a half teaspoons of dried basil. Of course, if you have fresh basil, go ahead and use it. I don't have any fresh and we're trying to only go to the store once a week. So I am just making do with the things that I have at home. Now, if you're not using the nuts, you can just go ahead and process it at this point and get it nice and smooth. But I am using nuts, and so I'm going to add, this is a half a cup of almonds. You could use cashews. We just have a family member who's allergic to cashews, and so I substitute almonds. I did soak these because the almonds are not as soft as cashews, so I put these in a bowl and I poured boiling water over them, and I let them set for about an hour. And that just allows them to soften up, and then they will blend nicer into the ricotta. So we have those in there. Oh, and I almost forgot, I want a little bit of freshly ground black pepper as well. We just like the flavor that that adds to it. Okay, so we're gonna put the lid on the food processor. This is a Cuisinart food processor. It's a 14 cup, but I have the 10 cup insert in there because you know I don't have enough volume really for the um, the larger bowl. So I'm just going to turn it on. It's going to be noisy, but we'll process it and get it nice and smooth. Okay, I'm going to just scrape down the sides because I can see that a little bit of the nuts and garlic have kind of stuck 
to the side and I don't want to miss any of that yumminess. I want it all to get down in there. So it's really interesting how much this looks like ricotta cheese. We'll just give it another little swirl here. Okay, so I just want to show you what it looks like at this point. It looks so much like ricotta cheese. Okay, so this is perfect right now. You could use this to put it on pizza. You could just spread it on the crust or you could put little blobs of it on the pizza along with some vegetables. It'll add a lot of flavor and texture and really be scrumptious. Great for lasagna and that's what I'm going to be using this for is for a filling for lasagna. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So this is 10 ounces of Trader Joe's organic frozen spinach that's chopped and I just thawed it out and then I put it in a um, strainer and I just squeezed as much water out of it as I possibly could. So, so you see, I mean it started, it was a big bowl full, 10 ounces and it's just so full of water. And we don't want to leave all that water in there because then it'll make our filling too runny. And we want it to really be nice and a little bit um, firm. We don't want it to be too watery. And I'll be making a video all about how to make the lasagna as well. Okay, so we have that in there. And we just want to process that in it pretty well because I have found that even people who say they don't like spinach, if you don't tell them what's in this, um, they won't even know that they're eating spinach because it just makes a beautiful green layer in the lasagna. And they can think it's basil. Okay, so we're just gonna process this a bit. And I've got a little bit stuck here at the back. So I'm just gonna push that down in there. And this just makes an incredible filling, you guys. Okay, there you go, that's it. So what did this take? All of like five minutes to make. It smells amazing. I have used fresh basil in it, which is really wonderful as well. And adds to the green color. And, oh, I should taste it and see if I want to add more lemon juice. Mm. You know, actually I am. I'm going to add about a tablespoon. Because I would just like it to have just a little more tang. So that ended up being three tablespoons then, all together. And we'll just blend this just a little bit more. Okay, perfect. I just love the color that it makes. It's amazing. And so this is enough filling to make a large lasagna pan full of lasagna. I'll divide it up and I'll make two layers of lasagna uh, or ricotta layers out of this and it's perfect. But like I said, you could also use it on pizza you could put it on baked potatoes and add a little bit of marinara and have like little um, pizza potatoes. You could air fry slices of potatoes and then put some of the ricotta on the air fried slices of potatoes and a little bit of marinara. It would be fantastic with just a little bit of fresh basil on top. So there you go. This is a delicious basil tofu ricotta. Now, if you don't want to have basil in there, if you want it to be more ne neutral, you could just leave the basil out. Do all the other steps and just leave the basil out of it. And then you, it, you wouldn't have to go with an Italian flavor. You could use it in different ways. So thank you so much for watching today. I will post a link below to the recipe so that you have a printable recipe on the blog at nutmegnotebook.com. And also after we make the 
um, video for the lasagna. We'll come back and we'll post a link to that. And I also have a homemade marinara sauce that's oil-free, that's absolutely delicious, easy. It only takes about 35, 40 minutes total to make it. And you're gonna love that recipe as well. So you know everything that you need to do here on YouTube. So like, subscribe, hit the bell, and go, go over to nutmegnotebook.com and make sure to subscribe and get your two free recipes that are just for subscribers. Thank you so much. I'm Tammy, and I help you get healthy and stay healthy one meal at a time.